Good evening, welcome back. Tonight we're going to be summarizing module uh, 5, course 3, real estate salesperson program. Uh, this is part 2, so we're going to be just covering lesson 4, 5, and 6. So let's get into it. Lesson 4, they talk about gathering information. So sewage systems. Private and municipal sewage systems are different. With private sewage systems, water waste is dealt with individually, not collectively. A municipal sewer system allows waste from a rural property to flow by gravity into sewer piping. The waste is carried to a treatment facility where it is cleaned before circulated. Private on-site sewage systems are classified by the Ministry of Environment, Con Conservation and Parks according to the type. The two primary elements that command the size and complexity of a system in Ontario are the maximum amount of water that the building can produce daily and soil slash side conditions. The Ontario Building Plan, the Ontario Building Code, the Building Code requires that any structure be at least five meters away from the distribution pipes contained within a septic bed. In most areas, the local municipalities, building departments, examines plan, uh, sorry, examines pl examines plans, issues permits, and carries out inspections for on-site sewer systems re regulated under the Building Code. In other areas, the approval responsibility has been delegated to local cons conservation uh, authorities and health units. You should have basic knowledge of private sewer systems to be able to identify problems, know when a qualified technician technician would uh, should come become involved. The biggest issue faced on a rural property is overflow because the system is over capacity. And then there's a the water supply. Water sources that supply rural properties include rivers and lakes and well water. River or lake source water is not a, is on a jet pump system that uh, jet pump system through either above ground or below ground pipe from the shore to the building. These systems will have to be drained in the fall, but there are heating systems to extend the use of the season. Alternatively, some cottage owners may rely on a well for drinking water and restrict lake or river water use for other daily needs. There are several types of wells that you will need to be familiar with. Uh, there's a dug and board wells that are shallow well systems that have a wet water source or water table aquifer that is near the surface. And then there's drilled wells that are used to connect to deep water supplies, sometimes over 200 feet in depth. The cost, they cost more to construct but generally provide much more reliable and safe supply of drinking water and then there's sand point wells that are used with a shallow with a shallow water table without bedrock shared shared wells are shared uh, systems in which a well is located on one property but shared with other uh, others nearby a buyer facing situations should have a clear understanding of the shared sharing arrangement example a written agreement and associated rights responsibilities and maintenance costs it benefits you to know the factors leading to a rural, rural water contamination. Sediment is a, any particulate a matter that is found in the water. The most common sed sediments are silt and sand. Sediment can clog appliances and faucets uh, aerators, make water cloudy and unsightly to, unsightly to use, and sediment particles can harbor dangerous microorganisms. Living organisms are common in many rural water sources. Uh, usually lake water is more contaminated than wa water from wells, but is not always the case. Living organisms in water are the most serious form of rural water, rural water contamination since they have the potential to create immediate and sometimes life-threatening illnesses. Hardness and iron deposit on virtually even every surface. Sinks, faucets, appliances, and showers. If hard, if hardness and iron levels are too high, they can quickly destroy these fixtures, fixtures, and make even a new cottage or home look decades old. These factors can also impede the effectiveness of water treatment equipment. Various measures should be taken by rural property owners to ensure high water quality and prevent contamination from leaking into well, wells. Um, some things you can. Uh, 
do to prevent contamination is seal from the outside any openings to the well using durable sealing materials. Ensure that uh, sanitary well seal and well cap are firmly situated and watertight. Make certain that well vents pipes are well vent pipes are properly screened and otherwise protected so that foreign matter does not enter the well. The well casing should be visible to ensure every access if repair work is required. And then water disinfecting can be accomplished using chlorine. chlorine. Uh, you will need to know how and when water should be tested for bacteria and the equipment used to assist in quality of the water. Uh, testing for chemical contamination might be required. Um, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks and the Public Health Authority provide a variety of information concerning water testing. When testing water, these sep three separate samples are required and should be collected one to three weeks apart. Following initial testing, one or two tests per year uh, appear adequate. Unless other unless some occurrences occur, occurrence uh, has taken place that would affect the water supply onto the property for cottages, two or three samples are recommended during any season. The first should uh, should be conducted at the start of the season when the cottage is initially initially opened. Depending on the age of the ins installation, well installation records should be on file within the Ministry of uh, of the Environment, Conservation, and Parks website. You will often refer to this site when listing or and selling rural properties. You will need to be careful. Sorry, you need you will need to give careful consideration to shared wells, which are common. These agreements are like other agreements, such as shared driveway agreements. It is recommended that a formal agreement be registered at the local land titles office. Like any agreements, it should be formalized before problems arise and while all parties are on good terms. So in the summary we learn about river or lake source water and then uh, the different types of wells. There's dug and bored wells, there's drilled wells, there's sand, sand point wells and then there's shared wells. Um, things that might contaminate water is sediment uh, which is any particle matter that is found in the, in the water and then there's living organiz organisms that are commonly uh, found in water sources. Moving on to heating systems, the different sources of heating system heat available on rural properties are oil, next number two propane, and number three electricity via heat pump, and number four wood. Heating typically accounts for 60% of all energy used in the home, even so the cost of home heat varies widely by region, by season, and by any number of fa other factors. Some heating systems are inherently, inherently more efficient than others at converting fuel to heat. Likewise, some forms uh, of fuel provide more heat energy than others, but they also may cost a lot more to purchase. You will need to suggest a heat loss calculation be completed in any rural home. This, this determines how much heat the building needs on the coldest days. Usually heat maintenance considerations are dependent on the source of heat. The main causes of maintenance problems are number one, internal corrosion, two, improper installation, three, improper refueling, and four, breaks in the fuel line. As with TSSA inspections for oil tanks, a wood energy technology transfer, WETT, inspection for wood burning appliances, wood stoves, wood services must be completed prior to close for insurance purposes. So the TSSA inspects oil tanks and the WETT inspects wood burning appliances. Got it. Uh, shoreline activity. So shoreline activity should be given special attention when listing or buying rural properties. Construction of boathouses and docks can impact both shoreline waters and fish habitat. Approval for such structures are administered through Ministry of uh, Natural Resources and Forestry. If a property fronts front on a Redu Canal or a Trent 70 waterway in waterway or shoreline works must also be approved by federal authorities such as Department of Canadian, Canadian Heritage. All docks and boathouses must be located directly in front of the applicant's property and must not interfere 
with the neighbor's use of the pro of their property. You will need to know the most. Uh, you will need to know that most alterations and additions to such structures, including size and location of the structure, must comply with municipal regu municipal regulations, the building code, and local zoning bylaws. Individual contemplating uh, dredges sh dredging should contact the MNRF. MNRF. What is MNRF? Ministry of what was it? I just read it here somewhere. MNRF. It was the Ministry of something. Oh yeah, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. For detailed information, current uh, regulations and permit applications. Local conservation authorities may also be involved in the approval process if project falls within regulated areas. Individuals contemplating dredging or dredging should also be reminded that the Federal Fisheries Act provided, provides for the protection of fish habitat. The quantity of material to be removed, the maintenance of bankside and shoreline vegetation, and the protection of aquatic plants and the disposal of dredge materials are all taken into consideration when reviewing dredging pros proposals. The Public Land Act provides that no person shall, without a permit, dredge or cause to be dredged any shore lands and fill or cause to be filled any shore lands. Water rural, waterfront rural land or, landowners m have used various control methods over the years for aquatic plants. These include raking, mechanical harvesting, removal by hand, the placement of barriers, color, cutter bar devices that mow the plants, the use of chemicals. The underlying regulatory concern is that m such practices will in some way harm fish habitat. Procedures are established based on the types of control processing being used, example chemical or physical slash mechanical. The, appro the approach taken will dictate which ministry is most directly involved in the approval process. Okay, a lot of information in this lesson. I do hope you go over it by yourself as well. But yeah. Sewage systems, water supply, heating systems, shoreline activity, and then next, the shuttle and fixtures. The shuttle and fixtures section of the rule offer must be clearly spelled out and agreed to by all parties. Different differing opinions about what constitutes a shuttle versus a fixture on a rural property can lead to lit lit litigation. When in doubt, you will have to explain further anything of value to the sellers that they plan to take with them should be mentioned in the agreement of purchase and sale, particularly if the item could be a fixture that should stay. It is not uncommon to sell cottages with furnishings. It is advisable to consult with a tax lawyer regarding HST appliances, uh, sorry, HST applications and contents, and extra, shell, extra shuttles and furnishings including couches, beds, dressers, tables and chairs, outdoor furniture, and itemized list of shuttles including Included, included should be provided and attached as scheduled as scheduled when any agreement of purchase and sale. So this was lesson four. Moving on, moving on to lesson five, preparing to sell and lease rural properties. So obligations regarding disclosure of facts and defects unique to rural properties. Uh, dealing with rural properties as a salesperson, you will have you will always err on the side of cautious, caution and investigate and disclose as much as you know about the rural property. Obligation to obligation to determine and disclose material facts, latent facts, improvements made and permits uh, required and received easements. Uh, always recommend a home suspect home inspection. Verifying key considerations, you will need not you will need not to know all the answers to something that you are not qual qualified to speak about. Uh, that said, it is important when dealing with rural properties to verify if the if the rural property has riparian repari, repari rights, and the impact if the property does not have any repari, repari, repari rights. Show road allowance ownership. ownership <coughs> excuse me. Uh, any waterfront improvements, road access, existing alternative energy contracts. You should understand the inspection report for the sewage and septic systems as well as the test result of a water system and well. If you cannot sufficiently explain the contents of the report, you must refer their client to a professional that can. 
Tax considerations. Keep these tax considerations in mind when listing a rural property. Personal use property, cottage or second home. If the, pro if the property is not the buyer's principal residence, then tax is applicable on the sale. The Income Tax Act and the Capital Gains Concept. The Principal Residence exception, Exemption. Non-resident sellers. Refer the buyer to a professional if they have detailed questions regarding taxes. Recommendations to enhance the sale or lease of property. You will need to recommend that all main components of a rural property be checked uh, be checked prior to listing. This includes water systems, septic systems, and heating systems. There are also simple enhancements that can be completed including clean up the yard, trim the bushes, repair the docks, and fix broken screens. And then considerations for leasing. When leasing a rural property you will need to consider the distance between the owner slash landlord and the property, the tenant's famil familiar familiar oh, familiarity with private well and septic system, the difficult of a difficulty of reattracting a tenant for a remote location year-round versus seasonal occupation. Lesson 5 is complete. Moving on to Lesson 6. Factors Im Impacting Value So, obligations when uh, providing the value of a rural property. Mm, you should check com uh, comparable sales and current listings of rural properties in the area. These, uh, this comparison is usually done using Geo Warehouse. Excuse me. Factors to take into consideration when providing an opinion of value for a rural property include condition of all major components such as heating system, water system, septic system, roof and windows. Important to verify all these components were last serviced. Um, Inquire as what to uh, what to, uh, inquire as to what shadows and fixtures are included or excluded. You do not have the experience selling rural properties. It's important to work with someone salesperson who does. You must follow the code of ethics when providing opinion. And then moving on to obligation when recommending services. Uh, when providing an opinion of rural property, you will need to recommend a septic septic professional to check the septic system, a heating professional to discuss the furnace that will last and a well specialist to check the wells, uh, a home inspector to look at the things like roof and windows and an asset appraiser that can appraise equipment. You must not claim to be a specialist in any area or give wrong advice or direction to a seller or, or on the value of the property. Factors that may impact the value Numerous factors can impact the value of a rural property that you will need to be aware of. So, one, the highest and the best use of the property. Two, if the property is a year-round or seasonal. Three, if the access is by the road or water. Four, the size of the property. Five, what services are available. Six, the type of heating. Seven, the location of the property. Eight, property features such as water frontage, bush, creek, pond, etc. Nine, the condition of the improvements to the property. And ten, if there are any easements or right-of-ways, um, if there are registered restrictions in the place, and last, zoning. Key consider considerations regarding construction. Urban homeowners do not frequently encounter the same construction sh issues that rural homeowners face. The listing and sale of rural properties necess necessita necessitates specialized knowledge regarding structural movements, footing, piers, uh, roof construction, decks, porches, uh, not porches, porches, drainage, wood stoves, and winterization, retaining walls, do-it-yourself work. DIY could work could mean the permits were not obtained and the Ontario Building Code may not have been followed. Most of the time, the rural property owners are responsible for maintenance or repairs at their own expense. This includes water septic, hydro running into the property. You will have to know the land. You will not have to know about the land and geography in the rural area to you cover and you should work with people in the area who have experience with the rural construction. Key considerations regarding financing. Rural properties have difficult oh, sorry, rural properties have different mortgage requirements. Mortgage lenders often have special rules for rural properties to reduce their risk, which include uh, potable water requirements of insur insurance. Lenders do not want rural problems such as well or septic issues or waterfront improvements to become their problems, so they insist more information to be completed before approving an application. This may include an environmental report. A good local bank 
manager or a mortgage mortgage broker who knows the territory and the market is valuable. You will need to have one of, have one or two of them that you can refer your clients to when they are not approved by conventional banks. Okay, sounds good. Moving on to lesson seven. Considerations for an agreement of purchase and sale. As a salesperson, you will need to consider different things when creating an agreement of purchase and sale for rural property. <coughs> excuse me. There may be difficulty in accessing the wa in the pro excuse me. There may be difficulty in accessing the property during certain times of the year. So example, a seasonal property that is being marketed in the winter. There are clauses unique to rural properties, for example, regarding the well, septic, dock, and boathouse, and the acknowledgement that the agricultural activities are surrounding areas, are in the surrounding areas. The seasonal nature and the unique characteristics of rural properties can impact when a property is listed, shown, and closing date. Important for you to choose third-party professionals for rural property areas who are more familiar with the uh, nuisance of that location. Nuisance? Nuance, nuances of that location. Sorry. Clauses that could in, that could be included in an offer of a rural property. It is important that you have a general general knowledge of the common clauses often seen for rural properties. This includes clauses concerning sec, sewage and septic systems, road access, water access, shore road allowance, and inspection conditions. Unique requirements for a rural property. You will need to know how to draft an offer, including conditions and clauses for a rural property. Okay, makes sense. That was lesson seven. Moving on to lesson eight is basically summary practice activities, and the module summary is basically what we just covered. It's the same thing we've talked about, and uh, yeah, like the type of properties that there are. Uh, re rural residential year round and then there's seasonal cottages and then there's waterfront year, year round and seasonal properties there's hobby farms and then there's residential vacant lots yeah so pretty much we've talked about everything here and yeah I hope this helped I'll be doing lesson sorry I'll be doing module 6 soon uh, this was um, this was a summary of module 5 this is part 2 if you haven't checked out part 1 I hope you did uh, it, it talks about lesson 1 and 2 1, 2 and 3 and this this mo this summary talks about lesson 4, 5, 6 and 7 thank you I hope you learned something and have a good night